Hello, and welcome back to The Agent Is In. Today, Vratislav is joining us to talk about event-driven CF Engine. I'm Nick. I'm Craig. And... I am Craig. I'm Cody. Hello, CF Engineer, and there's Cody. And, and we have Herman joining us as well. Vratislav? Okay. Yeah, welcome again. Uh, I'm Vratislav. I'm working on CF Engine as a software engineer or mostly as a developer. And I'm usually responsible for the core stuff. Uh, so not the shiny web UI things, but uh, the stuff that's uh, behind the scenes. And that's uh, what I would like to show you a little bit today. And, uh, but don't worry, we will look at the nice and shiny UI as well, uh, because uh, that's the user-friendly way of doing things and also a user-friendly way of testing things for me and other people from the team. So the topic for today is uh, event-driven CF engine, um, which is, a, let's say, a completely new thing uh, happening uh, these days and in the last couple months, I would say, uh, because um, if you are familiar with CF engine, and I believe everybody here is, then you probably know that uh, CF Engine traditionally is mostly focused on doing periodic things uh, with the default interval, which is uh, five minutes, but it can be changed. Uh, it's not only a one interval, there is an interval for the agent run, and then you have an interval for a report collection if you are running CF Engine Enterprise. And uh, these things can combine in various ways. So with the default, you have five minutes. Uh, five minutes is maybe not so long time, uh, even though that's questionable. It depends on the situation. If your infrastructure is under a DDoS or some other problematic situation, you probably want to act fast and five minutes can be too long. Uh, but uh, even if everything's running OK, and even if five minutes looks like a not so long time, the problem is that these things, they can add up. So for example, if you spawn a new host and you bootstrap it to a CF Engine hub, and there's no magic happening, then the hub, the host contacts the hub and then it can take up to 15 minutes for the host to sh show up in mission portal with the information about the host, with the information that the host provides. The reason for that is that uh, every five minutes, there's an agent run on the host. Every five minutes, there's a report collection on the hub, but then quite a bit of things on the hub are actually maintained and refreshed by the agent run on the hub itself. So if you add these three five minute intervals, and if you are really unlucky, then it can take up to 15 minutes for things to show up in the web user interface. And to be honest, this was uh, probably the most important motivation behind all these efforts to make CF Engine more event driven. Because uh, when we were running demo sessions, uh, this was a really not good looking thing. <laughs> so when we demo things and we added hosts to CF Hub, then telling everybody to wait for 15 minutes for things to show up uh, was, uh, was really a, a bad um, example of things, uh, of how things uh, can work. At small scale, five minutes is a really long time. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not like that when you're running, you know, thousands of hosts, you do something and then all of a sudden you get pretty much a meet, you know, you get pretty quick feedback because of different splays, but uh, for sure for a few hosts, um, five minutes is, is an eternity. Yeah, exactly. And the same applies when you have a large infrastructure, but you only want to do a certain thing on a couple hosts then it doesn't really matter that you have a huge infrastructure, but it still takes a lot of time to do things on those couple hosts. So, uh, well, the reason for this is basically the nature of CF Engine because CF Engine is based on promise theory. And so everything is a promise. Uh, CF Engine is pool based. Uh, so there's no pushing if some host requires or requests some action from a different host. It's really a request, uh, which can be rejected or something can happen, but uh, there's no pushing and there's no force runs or anything like that. So in the situation I described with a new host bootstrapped, the thing is that the new host contacts the hub and requests some information. Uh, and then it can it does an agent run, and then the hub goes and requests information from the host. So it is hard to do some instantaneous actions because that would be like forceful and pushing, basically. But on the other hand, it is possible to just do the requests, make the requests more often, and do things like that. So in the situation I described with the default five minute interval, you can get up to 15 minutes. If you shorten the intervals to one minute, then the worst case you are at three minutes, which is probably not too bad. Three minutes is an okay time, let's say. Uh, but then the problem is that you do everything every minute and that can kill the infrastructure it will require much more resources and it's generally not a great idea. So shorten the in, shortening the intervals is not a great strategy. Uh, what we decided to do instead was to make CF Engine more event driven. And uh, I can show you some examples and I will go through a couple of places where this uh, event handling and reactions to events happens. So let me now switch here. I hope you can all see uh, CF Engine Enterprise Mission Portal. Uh, as you can see, I have three hosts uh, bootstrapped to this hub. Um, they are spawned in AWS uh, using our great tool, CF Remote. I'm not sure if there was a webinar focused on CF remote, but if not, maybe we should do one. Uh, but there are definitely some blog posts about it. So yeah, I use that too, too. You can spawn VMs, you can install CF engine, bootstrap CF engine, and you can do various things using that too. Uh, so here I have the host. If I switch to my terminal window, then uh, I'm here on the on the hub, uh, you can see I am running CF Engine. I am running a build from today because when I was preparing for the session, I discovered a, a minor bug, which I fixed. And so now I'm running the fixed version. And uh, here in the another window, I am running a CF hub process. Uh, let me scroll up. Yeah. Uh, here I'm running a CF hub process with uh, verbose logging and uh, timestamps in logs enabled. And I'm piping the output through grep because I'm only interested in a, in specific uh, log messages. So here it's running. You can see that uh, every minute it uh, does a summary of uh, how many hosts are in the infrastructure. And uh, now if I switch to my next uh, terminal tab, you can see that with CF remote show, uh, I, can, I can show all the hosts that I spawned with CF remote. 
So there is the hub uh, running in AWS, as I mentioned before. You can see some details about the machine. And then there is a group of C7 hosts, which are CentOS 7 hosts. There's U20 hosts, Ubuntu 20 hosts, and Debian 10 hosts. And so now I can go and use CF Remote to install CF Engine on the Ubuntu 20 hosts, and I can bootstrap them to the CF uh, to the C7 hub. So let's hope it works. <laughs> uh, Um, Hope you made your offering. Yeah. So it installed, it's bootstrapping, and it's bootstrapping on the other host. Okay. So now maybe, hopefully, we should see some magic. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to happen that fast because, uh, as you can see, it runs every 07 or 08 every minute at 07 or 08. And uh, the machines bootstrapped right after that. So maybe we can, maybe we need to wait. Uh, it shows up already. Five hosts, two new. Right, yeah. So you can see, yeah, good point. Thanks, Ule. So you can see here that uh, it now recognized the two new hosts. Uh, this is actually, this would happen before as well, uh, but this is pure luck. Uh, the thing is that CF Hub does uh, report collection every five minutes based on the classes defined. So it happens at 05, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. So this was a normal uh, Hub uh, report collection. And as you can see, uh, it's, collected reports from the from the five hosts, two of them were new. And now we are at the different interval, so, or we are at the different minute in an hour. So um, let's uh, bootstrap the other two hosts and hopefully we will see a bit different behavior that will demonstrate the event reactions stuff a bit better. What was the traceback? It was because uh, I I said uh, D10 host instead of D10 hosts. Thanks. So it didn't find the, the hosts. Uh, yeah, while it's doing things, maybe, yeah, it should, it should happen quite soon. Yeah. So here you can see that it uh, discovered the two new hosts again. Uh, this time, this was uh, not the normal five-minute interval report collection. Uh, but this basic check happens every minute. Uh, so every minute, it checks for new hosts. Every five minutes, it does the full report collection, like it used to before. Uh, but now CF Hub actually does this new host uh, discovery, which happens every minute. So here you can see that it found two new hosts. And it does collecting reports from all two new hosts. Uh, that's the, the all word here is because it does uh, checking for license count. So if you go above the license count, it may only collect reports from a couple new hosts and skip the others if they are over the license. And it says new hosts discovered and it schedules the report collection. So with this mechanism, uh, new hosts are discovered every minute instead of every five minutes. So this demonstrates one of the approach where we basically shorten the interval to one minute, but without requiring extra resources because this check that happens every minute is very cheap. So every minute we do a cheap check and every five minutes we do the potentially resource hungry report collection. So unless you add new hosts, the behavior is exactly the same as it used to be before. Uh, but if you are adding new hosts, then they are discovered in at most one minute from uh, since you since you add them. So this demonstrates one of the things. 
uh, I can go back to mission portal. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see that there are five hosts and uh, yeah, they show up in here. Um, and the reports are collected. Not, not always, you can see all the data. And the reason, yeah, like here, for example, uh, the reason for this is because we didn't change everything to be event driven yet. So uh, there are still some things that happen only every five minutes on the on the hub. So the agent run on the hub actually refreshes the information that is shown here. Uh, so we would have to we will have to wait for some time for this information to show up. The plan for this is uh, to, to make sure that uh, it is handled in a much better way, uh, which brings me to another uh, functionality, which I can show here. So we added these two buttons. Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure how many people are familiar with them, but as you can see, one of them says trigger agent run, and the other one says request report collection. And uh, as the button suggests, they trigger an agent run. And this one requests a report collection. Again, you can see that it's a request. Uh, so in this case, there are actually two requests happening. One of them is that mission portal requests, uh, sends a request to CF Hub to do report collection and then cf hub which is a daemon requests the reports from the from the host so if i click the button then it sends a request to the cf hub process and here in the logs you can see handling report collection request for and then the host key of the of the host so the CF hub process can now react to this event uh, that the button is clicked. Of course, uh, the process, the CF hub process is not actually monitoring the button, uh, but it's using uh, the PostgreSQL database and uh, PostgreSQL database supports notifications. So the CF hub process is attached to the PostgreSQL database and it listens to these notifications. And when a notification arrives, it reacts uh, to the notification. So I can actually go here and uh, I can run PSQL, CFDB, and then run a command. And, it's, uh, and I can say notify uh, report collect, I think. And then I need the SHA of the host. And I think the syntax is like this. Yeah, and this way I sent the notification. And uh, I don't know if this was, yeah, here you can see that uh, it actually got the notification and it did the report collection. So, this is how it happens. Basically, the mission portal UI sends this notification because the mission portal UI is also connected to the database. So the database provides the messaging mechanism, basically. The reason for that is that we want to separate the, the privileges. So we don't want mission portal to actually run do the report collection and talk to the host and everything. That's the responsibility of CF Hub. So again, CF Hub provides a mechanism to request report collection. It can reject it, uh, but uh, right now the mechanic, the, the implementation doesn't doesn't reject the the, the requests. Uh, but we can easily do that based on the system load, for example. So this is one of the mechanisms. Uh, the similar mechanism is used for a new daemon, uh, which we don't have in any released version. If uh, I'm correct, uh, it's only in the upcoming, or it will only be in the upcoming 3.20 release. 
So now it's in the uh, master branch and it's called CF reactor. Uh, it's a new daemon uh, that we created. Uh, the reason for the new daemon is that uh, while the report collection is handled by CF hub, as you can imagine, there are many other notifications and events that we want to react to. Uh, but CF Hub is a daemon responsible for report collection. And the other things are out of scope of this daemon. And it's complicated enough already. So we didn't want to make it even more complicated. So that's why we created this CF reactor daemon, uh, which is very small. Um, I can maybe do, yeah, I can, for example, do grab RSS from the. Uh, from the status of the process, and you can see that it only eats two megabytes of RAM, uh, which is uh, really tiny uh, compared to, I believe, if I go here and check uh, check CF Hub. Um, one one six zero oh, four. Why is it not there? Oh yeah, because it forks. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's not the process that I was running. So I need to go here. Yeah, and then we can check uh, two four one four seven here. I guess. Yeah. So here you can see that CF Hub is just way bigger than CF Reactor. So now if I uh, stop CF Reactor, we can start it in foreground, just like uh, we did with the CF hub process before. And this time we can run it with debug. This is also another nice thing. Uh, if you run CF hub with dash dash debug, it just produces a ton of noise because it's doing so many things. Uh, CF reactor on the other hand is doing very little. As you can see now it's doing pretty much nothing. Uh, so if you run with dash dash debug, the logs are still pretty easy to read. And uh, yeah, here you can see it's uh, it said no CMDB data. And that's the reason for that is that uh, one of the things it's doing is that it's uh, handling CF uh, CMDB data, which is a new enterprise feature. So here, if I define CF uh, CMDB data, which is like host specific data for this particular host, uh, then I can say that Nick is the maintainer of this machine and uh, yeah, maintainer of the machine. I can save it. And here you can see that CF Reactor updated the CMDB data file for the host. Uh, the reason why, that it, why this is necessary is that, again, uh, we want mission portal to in, insert the data into the database. But then the mechanism used for the CMDB data distribution is that the hosts actually fetch data and fetch uh, data files from, from the hub. So here you can see that uh, it created a parent directory for this file. And this is actually the file that this specific host fetches from the hub. But that means that we need some mechanism that will take What does that file look like, Radislav? Can you cat that file out? Yeah, sure. I can show it. Um, yeah, the, the reason or, or the mechanism that we need is, um, yeah, I can actually show it with JQ, I believe, uh, host specific JSON. And uh, yeah, it's a JSON file. It uh, contains the information that I put into Mission Portal, of course. Uh, I guess CMDB would be a nice topic for an, for a completely separate uh, presentation, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the point is that you can assign host-specific data or you can assign data to hosts. Uh, it can be variables and or classes. Uh, I didn't put any classes there, so I only have variables here. And I only have this one variable here. Uh, but as I mentioned before, we need this file. And what actually happens is that the user puts the information here in the web page, which inserts it into the database. 
but we don't want the process running the web UI, which is the HTTPD process running as the CF Apache user. We don't want it. We don't want to give it access to the files that are actually distributed to the hosts because yeah, the, the web user interface should be separated from that. So it shouldn't have write access and probably not even read access to the policy files and files distributed to the hosts. So what we needed was a mechanism to translate the data or basically take the data from the database and put them into these host specific files. And uh, this is handled by CF Reactor. So here you can see that it updated the file right after I changed the data here. I can actually show you that if I change the data here to my name and click save and really quickly switch here, then you can see that it's handled pretty much immediately. And I'm actually quite lucky because this is the next thing I wanted to show you. Uh, here it says something about inventory refresh. Uh, I can maybe scroll a bit up. And uh, that's another mechanism and another thing handled by CF Engine, uh, CF Reactor, sorry. So there is inventory, which I believe you are all familiar with. Uh, it's like the basic information about hosts uh, that CF Engine gathers from the hosts and uh, collects the data and shows it in Mission Portal. But uh, as you can see here, Oh, maybe I can show the full inventory, maybe better. So here you can see all the hosts and with some basic information, there's a bunch of things here. I can do like uptime minutes, for example. And uh, yeah, so again, CF Engine collects variables and passes from the host, but the hosts, they don't put together the inventory information as such. They provide var variables and classes. And then on the hub, the inventory information is generated. And uh, before this was handled asynchronously or based on the events, this happened every five minutes. So again, if you had, a, if you had a reports collected from a host, it could have taken up to five minutes uh, for the information to show up here in the inventory. So I was actually not correct with the 15 minutes in the worst case scenario, because uh, if you were interested in the inventory information, that could have taken 20 minutes. Uh, so now it's uh, much faster because whenever reports are collected from a host, uh, the inventory refresh is requested for the host. So if I do request report collection here, it uh, requests the report collection. But now if I switch here and show the output from the CF reactor, you can see that there was an inventory refresh request. So if we go to CF hub, it handled the report collection request because CF hub is responsible for collecting reports. But then it sent a notification to CF reactor that actually requested the inventory refresh. And uh, again, uh, where was the, oh, I thought it was here. Okay. So again, I can do psql cfdb and run the command, which is notify. And this time it says it, just, it needs to be inventory refresh. And then the, and then the host key again. And, uh, says ha instead of sha okay and now i can cannot see the rest of it yeah okay yeah and again you can see it uh, registered the uh, inventory refresh and here it's actually the mechanism is much more complicated because uh, as you can see here in in the first for the first host, it says first inventory refresh request uh, that goes directly through. So the inventory refresh happens immediately. That's why. That's because uh, if you if a user clicks here, they want to refresh 
to happen immediately. But for the other hosts, it actually saves the information about the inventory refresh request. And then it takes for some time before it actually does the inventory refresh. Uh, the reason for that is that if you do an inventory refresh for too many individual hosts, it's a very expensive operation. And in that case, it's much better to do a refresh of the full inventory table in the database. So here, the notification handling actually has a lot of logic around how to do how to handle the notifications. So what we've seen so far is that if you bootstrap a new host, the reports are collected much faster than before because every minute there's a check. Uh, then if the reports are collected, then an inventory refresh happens, which refreshes the inventory information. And the last bit here is the trigger agent run button. And so if I click it, it uh, requests an agent run on the host. And then of course, it, if you want to see the results of the agent run, it needs to collect reports. So then it requests the report collection, which is as if I clicked the other button. And now I can see some fresh information. And uh, we should see here that, uh, yeah, if I go to another host, maybe this one that has uptime minutes one one nineteen. Then if I request an agent run and report collection, which triggers the inventory refresh, then if we go here and refresh it, it's the host that has 178 in the IP address, it's here. So here you can see that now it says uptime minutes 123 because we got the fresh information from the host. And uh, this is actually handled by a different mechanism. Uh, this time, or this is handled by uh, the CF exec D process. The CFXACD process is responsible for periodically running the agent on the host. Uh, but uh, with this, we again we needed a mechanism for the for the Apache process to request the agent run. Uh, so we created this uh, run agent.socket inside the varcf engine state CF exactly sockets uh, folder. And this is a socket uh, in which uh, the CF Apache user can write. Uh, and this is actually handled by ACLs. So if you check the access control list for, for the socket, it says that the CF Apache user can read write into it. And of course, the root user can use it as well. So. The mechanism this actually works is that uh, it's a it's a Unix socket and uh, the agent run is requested by writing into the agent into the socket. So here I take one of the host keys, and uh, well, actually here it's yeah it doesn't take a host key it takes an IP address I think. So I pipe it into the socket and I can use JQ to show the output because it's a JSON. And uh, as you can see, I requested an agent run on this host. And it actually, yeah, it talks to CFXACD, which listens to the socket. It gets the request and then it uses CF run agent to run to request an agent run on the host. So again, it's just a series of requests. <laughs> there is no push, uh, there's no force applied. It's just this sends a request. CF execd handled the request, which again can be rejected. And then it requests an agent run from the remote host. And that can of course be rejected again. Um, now, if I run it, it can I can show you that it, I can actually request multiple multiple agents uh, agent runs on multiple hosts. Um, 
and uh, yeah. Here what it are the differences in these exit codes here? So yeah, I actually checked that in the codes today because I thought it was a bug, but uh, this is actually the exit code from CF run agent. So what it does internally is uh, it runs CF run agent. So I can actually do CF run agent. Um, I'm not sure if it accepts comma spread list, but probably it does, I don't know. Uh, so I can do this and it does the same thing here. Um, it says exit code zero, which is exit code of, of the agent run on the remote host. But if I check the exit code here, it says 101. So this is from CF run agent. Uh, we kept, we preserved the exit codes when making these changes. So that's why they are maybe a little weird. Maybe we need to change them, uh, but this is how, how they work. If I use two hosts, it gives me the exit codes from the, from the host. Uh, and if I check the exit code here, it says two. So it looks like a failure, but it's because it hailed two hosts. It re requested the agent run on two hosts. So that's why it says two. Why it says 101 here, I'm not quite sure what's the logic behind this. Uh, yeah, so, so the thing is that this is not specific. This last bit is not specific to... Uh, CF Engine Enterprise. It's part of the CF Engine community builds as well, uh, because this is handled by CF Exec D. Uh, so it's the CF Exec D process that is listening to the socket. Uh, I can maybe even just uh, SSH to a different host, for example, which is a host, it's not a hub. And uh, uh, we can check if the if the socket is here as well. And as you can see, yeah, it's a Debian host, so it doesn't have the alias, but uh, the socket is here. So even on the host, I still have the socket because I have CF exec D and I, can, I could request uh, an agent run, but again, there's a security measure which prevents an arbitrary host from requesting an agent run on an arbitrary host. And by default, only the hub can request agent runs on hosts. So that's why it works here from the hub, uh, but it doesn't work from for other hosts. Uh, the only thing that works is that if I do echo local host here, then it requests an agent run on the hub itself. And it takes a while, but in the meantime, we can maybe go here. Yeah, I don't have netcat installed here, so I can't really show it quickly, but uh, so that's what I could probably do, even though Nick, you might know it, but uh, I'm not entirely sure if if a request from localhost is even allowed. Maybe it's only allowed on the on the hub. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, no, CF run agent will request locally by default. Um, I'm not sure to look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, here it was. Waiting for next, oh yeah, okay. I guess uh, I was unlucky this time and I hit the moment when the periodic agent run was running. And so I guess the request failed because, um, uh, well, it didn't actually fail. It ran the agent, but it was taking too long because there was a parallel agent run happening as well. But uh, you can see the exit code was zero. Here it's uh, provided some notice log information. So to summarize this a bit, I showed you three or four mechanisms that we introduced to make CF Engine more event driven. The events can come from various sources. Uh, as you can see, and as you can imagine, when I have this socket, uh, now here I'm using 
shell to write into the socket to request the agent run, but it can be a Python script or a Paro script or a Go binary writing into the socket and requesting an agent run. Uh, one of the things it can also be is that if I, uh, I know, I don't hear, have it here, but there is uh, a program called iNotifyWatch that allows you to monitor a file, for example, or a directory. So if, if a directory is created, you can react to it. Uh, you can use this in Bash, but there are also libraries for various programming languages using iNotify. And you can use that to react on various other events that are not even handled by CF Engine, but you can react to them and request uh, all sorts of things. Uh, if the process is running as root, it can use the PostgreSQL mechanism to, to request the inventory refresh or uh, the report collection. Uh, or it can talk to the pros, uh, it can talk to the socket for CFXXD. The access control list are for the socket are defined in the policy. So they can be tweaked to allow other users uh, to write into the socket. You can, of course, adapt the PostgreSQL rules, uh, the access rules to allow other users to talk to the PostgreSQL notification mechanisms. So these things can be extended uh, by users. We will definitely extend them in CF Engine to handle other things that currently happen those every five minutes or the basic, the, the default interval or whatever the interval is. So this is definitely not done. We have a lot of things to tweak and change them to be even driven. Uh, but we have already done quite a few things which uh, hopefully make CF Engine more responsive. And uh, in together, when they are combined and when we are done with them, you should be able to see information from a host that you bootstrap to Hub in basically less than two minutes, uh, which is quite a big difference compared to the 20 minutes, which is the worst case scenario. Uh, or which was the worst case scenario before we started making these changes. So we've done some plumbing work. We've got some more plumbing to do here, but like I'm super interested because, all right, so we've got like the socket, we've got these notifications from Postgres, we have custom promise types, but custom prom, like, so if I wanna start writing policy to react to events, random events, right? I'm still bound to, um, the periodic agent execution schedule right now. I mean, I could write a custom promise type to do something, but a custom promise is, you know, by default going to run maybe once every five minutes. Um, if you tune the scheduler down once a minute, if I write something else, maybe I can poke it and have it happen a little bit more quickly. But I'm really curious to know what your thoughts are about like taking this a bit further as a policy because you know I, I like policy um <laughs> like how you know this is like cf reactor is kind of like um a little bit of a black box or whatever but like what are your thoughts about extending this further um are we talking about new agents to be running to respond to events in the future yeah. or or what are your thoughts about this stuff from i guess yeah. both you and herman so the, the, the one thing I would start with is that if I go here and show the folder, so show the directory that actually contains the, the socket that I, I showed you, then you can see that it's called CF exactly sockets. So it's a plural. And uh, my idea behind this all when I started working on this was that the run agent socket will be just one of the sockets in this directory. And you will have other sockets for uh, CF exec D. So because CF exec D is a permanently running daemon that runs the agent periodically, it can also react to various events. Uh, so the way 
I would personally do this is uh, that you could send other requests to run agent. And uh, of course, if you run, if we run CF agent dash help, uh, you can, of course, you can see that you can, of course, specify the bundle sequence. And uh, if you run CF run agent dash help, you can specify the remote bundles, which is basically a remote bundle sequence. So the first step I think would be to allow requesting agent runs with specific bundle sequence, which okay. basically allows quite the simple implementation of anything, because then you can use this I notify watch or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then the logical extension of this would be to have some events promise type maybe. And uh, in the policy, you will write event promises that will be handled by CF exec D. So uh, I, my idea was like, uh, here I have some, maybe, yeah, here I have it in the future section uh, that there is CF exec D sockets, but you would have like event promise. And then you could, I don't know, you could uh, specify a file maybe that it can watch for whatever, or you could specify a Unix socket that it could listen to, or, or I don't know, TCP socket or whatever you want. Or you could have like a, I don't know what the syntax would be for that, but uh, you could have like a, like a time interval. So, we would basically have something like a cron functionality in CFXACD because that's what it is basically about. CFXACD is like a cron daemon pretty much, but uh, it would actually be policy defined schedule instead of some cron table or, or whatever. That sounds super exciting. Almost yeah. nearly as exciting as the markdown of your notes there. What format was that again? <laughs> Don't, say <laughs> Don't say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me just go through this if I mentioned everything that I had here. But uh, I believe we went through all of these and all the future plans. So the current next steps are really to move the other periodic tasks that happen on the agent run on the hub. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that the agent run on the hub can take a lot of time. And that's because of it has to wait for the, up, for the database maintenance tasks, pretty much. Uh, one of the tasks used to be the inventory refresh, which we moved away. Uh, but there are other things that happen in the agent run there. So if we move these out of CF Hub, uh, the agent run on the hub will be much faster. And again, we can do much better handling, uh, like update some data every minute, or we can we can maybe try to do it every minute unless the system load is too high. And if it's too high, we can do it every five minutes. So there are, ma there are many options and there's big room for much more complex and much more uh, inputs, many more inputs for the decisions uh, based on the, or affecting what happens and when. Herman, uh, what of this should, are, are we going to expect to see any of this stuff in our current LTSs? Um, probably the, the fast refresh will be in the next version of 3.18. Awesome. Um, that's what I'm aware of like the fast refresh of inventory and or CMDB data. OK. And cool. it will be in the 3.20 release, right? Yeah, 3.20 this, this summer. Yep. Awesome. So 
yeah, just maybe one thing that may not have been that clearly shown is that uh, CF reactor is specific to hub and it's specific to CF engine enterprise. Uh, that right now it reacts to these SQL notifications, but we also want to extend it to react some file changes and uh, other things. So maybe in the future, we will not discover new hosts every minute, but we maybe will do it based on the LMDB uh, data entries. So whenever something writes into the list of known hosts, we will immediately start acting and uh, it will not happen every minute. But all this is CF uh, enterprise and it's also specific to the hub. But the CF exec D socket is uh, available on CF engine community. So that can be leveraged for anything <laughs> on even on CF engine community. And the, that socket was introduced already. So it's already in the existing releases. Yeah, it's yep. been in CF engine for a while, actually. It's yeah. in 318 LTS. So is the inventory refresh, uh, but in the current releases, the inventory refresh is handled by CF hub, the CF hub daemon process. Uh, so we moved it to CF reactor to reduce the complexity and the CMDB uh, refresh handling is a new thing. So that's handled by CF reactor on in the upcoming releases. And also in the 3.18.2 release, I believe. Cool. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty excited. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing when we can start writing um, like you know higher level promises for more event driven stuff. Um, not having to cobble together I notify watch or something else. So that'll be exciting. I'm sure we'll cover that when we get there. Yeah. The quest. The question here is if we want to make CF exactly more complex, or if we want to, I don't know, maybe introduce a new demon to do this or leverage system D because like system D can react to these events. You can have a path path service, which reacts to events happening on a path, which is the I notify mechanism. You can have a system D listening to a socket and whenever there's a new connection, it can run a certain command. So I don't know. We we will see what the what the future brings, but uh, maybe it's just best to leverage system D and instead of like making CF exec D a bloated demon that does a lot of things that can be handled by something else. Or we could start by implementing it in a custom promise type. Um yes and no. <laughs> yeah, as Nick mentioned, the custom promises, they only happen when CF agent runs. So something needs to run CF agent, or we need to invent some persistent promises, spawning background processes or something like that, which is, of course, an option. Wow, that's exciting. So I think that's it for today. Thanks everybody for joining. Hang out afterwards if you want to chit chat. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.